Welcome to the Rediscovery channel. This is the channel where every week uh, we each take turns coming up with a different topic from history. Usually it's something that the other person does not know. My name is Ivor Kovac and uh, today it is my turn. So I'm going to tell Stilgar about something which he may or may not have heard of before. Um, this time I'm actually taking a request from uh, one of our viewers who asked me to cover uh, this topic and her username is loving me. So um, I'm going to ask uh, Stilgar, have you ever heard of the Iceman before? The Iceman? Yes. No. Is that some kind of mythological creature? No. I thought you were going to say like the X-Men character, but... No, no, um, I, I do know uh, Wim Hof. He calls himself the Iceman. He does like, he got famous like diving underneath ice, like on the, you know, like in the Nordics, Scandinavia. And now he has this whole ice Wim Hof breeding challenge. <laughs> I'm guessing that's not what you're talking about, though. No, the Iceman uh, is a body, a dead body that they okay. found <laughs> up in the Alps, frozen in the Alps. And ah, cool. supposedly this body is over 3000 years old. Although I don't have the greatest of faith in uh, the dating methods. So what I'm going to do is just stick with the evidence. So basically, um, Love and Me, she took a DNA test and it said that she was related to this, to this uh, dead body. And I first heard of the Iceman when I was in high school, that he was frozen in the Alps and found with all of his gear. And... Uh, so is, is loving me from uh, like Switzerland or Aust oh, Austria from, or? I believe she's from the United States. And okay. She's got DNA from uh, quite a few different people groups. She commented on the Guanch video. So that's okay, where cool. the, the request yeah, yeah. was put in. Mm -hmm. So I'll get right to it. Uh, the Iceman has also been named Otzi or Otzi and is also sometimes called the Similon Man, the House Lab. Biatch man, see, I, and uh, sometimes even frozen Fritz. Uh, the body, yeah, I know. Well, it is found right on the border between Italy and Austria. Uh, so the body was found in uh, 1991 by two tourists that were hiking through the mountains. It was a married couple, I would assume, Helmut and Erica Simon. And the head and back of this body were sticking above the ice. And the area that he was found in was a ravine in the Oztal Alps near Mount Similon. So those are where the different names for this guy are derived. Of course, we don't know what he actually called himself. And we're not quite sure what uh, people group that he corresponds to. But I have some possibilities, which I'll get to. So... He was found, you know, the gear that he was found with, uh, a copper bladed axe. And I'll post a picture of this in the video. It's just a tiny blade on a mostly wooden apparatus. Uh, a, and that was his only piece of metal. Apart from that, he had a stone dagger with a flint blade and a wooden handle, which was bound together by strips of muscle from some animal. He had a wooden bow, a U bow, which the measurement I got is 1.82 meters long. And that bow was just leaning up against a rock near where the body was found. Uh, and it was covered in blood. And he had a quiver, which was full of uh, arrows that mostly did not have heads on them. But there were two that, just two arrows that had arrowheads. And they were both ma made by a different person. And there was blood on these arrowheads. So, um, uh, and then he had a net for catching animals, they think, for catching rabbits. Like they would, he would throw the net over the animal and beat it to death while it was inside. And then a pouch containing a flint scraper and owl. So, this is a, a very old body. Uh, a flint scraper and owl? Owl, A W L. Yeah. Like the animal. No, no. That's O W L. Oh, a a okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Cool. Um, 
and then as far as as far as his clothing, he had a a leather loincloth, a belt, uh, I assume also made of leather, and uh, pants that came up kind of high that had like leggings with that also went over the shoulders. So 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 kind of like lederhosen type of pants, except these are made out of goat and sheep skins. And then he had a sheepskin, a goat and sheepskin coat on over that, a bearskin hat, hat, and uh, a mat of of grass. Like uh, it is a. At first, they thought it was a cape that would be wrapped around him, but the they're also considering that maybe it was his sleeping mat. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm about. 90% sure that the Romans, um, that when their soldiers had capes, they, that would also serve as a blanket for them to sleep. Is that, isn't that, is that right? I don't know. I heard that somewhere. Okay. I'm not going to commit to that because I'm not completely <laughs> sure, but I believe that was the purpose of their capes. However, this guy was not a Roman. This is before the Roman Empire had really yeah. got started. So that's all the stuff that he was found with. Uh, as for as far as the condition, um, I, and let me say that's a lot his, of stuff. He's carrying a lot. Yeah, and actually the stuff was just kind of laid around him, so it looks like he just kind of sat down to die there. And uh, there's there's a reason for that. He was actually dying already when he was on his way up into the mountains. So yeah. the body was still moist, and they still found food in his stomach. So they know what he was eating. And they also were able to extract DNA. And they also did a hair analysis, even though I don't see any hair on the body. You know, he looks pretty bald. And the outer layer of his skin is also gone. But I would assume they found the hair in the ice nearby. How so, Did he, like, get caught in a snowstorm or something? Like, how did his body s stay preserved for so in long? In the ice. He was, he was already up high in the mountains. Okay. Uh, and... He got frozen over, and then as the as the glacier melted, then uh, he came out of it. So, so I he guess, just got he got caught like well, glacier is just snow upon snow upon snow. So yeah, he got snowed he, under, and then he just became part of the glacier. Okay. Well, he's been there for thousands of years. Yeah, he got probably snowed into the glacier. Um, okay. And then as yeah. the glacier slid down and melted, I would assume you know that uh, he was revealed in that process um yeah and, and so they think he was about 45 years old when he died and they've done reconstructions there's a few different reconstruction attempts where they've built models and, and images of him which i'll include in the slideshow and they all kind of believe that he was prematurely aged and the rendition which is supposedly the most accurate he actually looks older than my than my, my than my parents he looks like he's in his 60s going on 70. Mm, um, yeah, but how accurate is that? I wonder. Well, I mean, depending on your lifestyle and hardships and the amounts of diseases you can have and also the time you spend in the sun, you can age faster, you know, more gratuitously. Yeah, no and, doubt. I just have my questions about some of these reconstructions anyway. Yeah, maybe the. I'm sure that there, that none of them are quite right, you know, because... We, we don't have any picture of this guy and even the best reconstructions and even with DNA are still going to, uh, they're, they're like, still going yeah, to like his skin is gone, right? Like his hair is gone. Like, did his he still have, did he still have his, have his teeth? His like, skin uh, is not completely gone. The outer layer of skin came off, which is uh, common. Supposedly that's what they said is common in mummification processes. Um, yeah. He still had teeth. They were badly rotten. They were badly rotten. Okay, because they didn't eat a lot of sugar. Well, so. There's a lot of grains. I think he had a lot of grains in his diet. So maybe they were just worn. They like, were worn and rotten. From grinding all the food. Okay, because apparently the Romans had pretty good teeth because they didn't eat as much sugar as we do. Well, anyway. this is, yeah, and I'm going to get to the Romans, actually. That's something that's relevant. Um, but this guy... <laughs> He, he wasn't part of the uh, Roman people group. The Roman people group did exist back then, but they were just confined to uh, 
Rome and some of the surrounding yeah, areas. They were just pretty one of insignificant uh, at the beginning, right? So that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seven. What is it? Seven cities on seven hills, something like that, mm -hmm. seven together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his his, his They think he was uh, five two, five uh, feet two inches in centimeters. I got one hundred fifty eight centimeters. Weight was one hundred thirty four pounds, which translates to sixty one kg. Okay. And According to the analysis of his body, he had strong leg muscles, which indicated a lot of movement up and down the mountains. And uh, as and and because of that, some people think he may have been involved in animal herding. However, because of uh, his copper axe head, and also because um, they found traces, they found particles of copper and arsenic in his hair. They think that he may have also been some type of uh, blacksmith, maybe working copper. And oh, that will had, that will age you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And he had arthritis in his joints. Uh, some of the websites I was looking at said he may have also had Lyme's disease. He had a whipworm parasite in his intestines and H. pylori in his stomach. So he wasn't doing so good health wise. What was the last one? H. pylori. And what is that? The bacteria that invades your stomach and it can lead to stomach cancer. Okay. A lot of people, and it's like more common in India today. I'm actually afraid I might have it. I've been trying to go to a doctor to get checked out, but that's uh, barely relevant. So uh, the point is he was in a lot of pain, most likely. And there's evidence that he was sick and, and uh, nauseous at, at about three uh sick for like three different times before his his death but that's still not what killed him and he had 57 tattoos uh which appeared to have been made with soot from a fireplace mm -hmm. and these aren't tattoos designed to depict anything what they think given the location of the tattoos is that it's an early form of acupuncture so and and it's concentrated around the ankles and knees, which were particularly deteriorated. So they, they're thinking these were attempts to relieve pain because some of this stuff does correspond to acupuncture and acupressure points. And if that's true, then that would mean that the Chinese aren't necessarily the first people to do acupuncture. And uh, yeah. yeah, so as far as his food, they found uh, wheat, in his stomach, ibex meat and deer meat and dried slow plums. Um, mm. And the cause, yeah, sorry, do you, do you want to? No, no, that's, that's good. Dried plums. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what a slow plum is actually. Mm. Um, S L O E. But I mean, we can find out. I can. Some kind it. of plum, I'm guessing, but I just thought it was interesting that they were dried. Okay. Well, yeah. No refrigerators back then, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess for in the winter, you also wanted some fiber in your diet, I guess. So, yeah, makes sense. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to, uh, if your food's going to, if you want to eat your food for more than one day, it's going to have to be dried or it's going to rot. So I imagine his meat was probably also dried. Oh, no, it could have been fresh. He could have killed it on the journey, too. But, but yeah. Or could so, have salted it, maybe. Yeah, salted it or smoked it. Hmm. Yeah, that could be, yeah. Um, so they found, now this is a cause of death, they found blood from four different people on his gear and, you know, indicating that he must have been in some kind of fight in order to cut these people. And he had a deep cut across one hand, which he attempted to staunch with uh, sphagnum moss. And the scientific name for this moss was sphagnum imbris. Imbricatum hornst, which grows in an area called Vinchgau Vinsch, Valley. And they think. Well, I like how you used an Irish accent for the uh, Latin. <laughs> what? Vinchgau? <laughs> no, that's the German part where you described your. Never mind. Okay, uh, Vinchgau. We should probably put that in the uh, description. Yeah, I will. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So they think he spent his adult life in Vinchgau Valley. Okay. And some of some of this moss was also found in his stomach, 
but it's believed that it was transferred there by accident while he was eating. And there was some other kind of moss that was in his stomach, which um, supposedly was an attempt to combat nausea, which could have, you know, if he had H. pylori, he would have been feeling that. Uh, and then there's a flint arrow, there's a severe head injury indicating he got hit in the head pretty hard and a flint arrowhead that was stuck inside his left shoulder. And the reason they actually found the arrowhead because of uh, the x-ray that they did, because the shaft was broken off. There was no shaft sticking out. And the arrowhead is coming out of, um, sorry, they, it went in through his back. So he was mm. shot in the back. Okay. And it's possible that he broke the arrowhead off himself. So it, yeah. it, it looks or, to me like it, my theory is that he got into a serious fight and probably killed quite a few of his opponents because he did walk away and then and, and then got up into the mountains to get away from them and realized he was going to die. So he just sat down there and died, probably laid his gear out to look at it one last time and then just kind of waited for death. And he was probably you know, pretty miserable to begin with with all those diseases and parasites and rotten teeth and arthritis and ugh. But yeah, I don't know. Like maybe he didn't experience it that way. So who knows? Yeah. People were probably more tough back then also, right? Probably yeah. complain I mean, a lot less than people today who think yeah, it's his pain, of, his pain threshold was probably a little bit higher than ours, I imagine. So yeah, you'd have to, to kind of get along in the ancient world and, Probably, I, I think also in the ancient world, people are less likely to listen to you complain. They'd probably be like, it's tough all over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially if you're in some tribal culture where everybody has to do work or they don't eat. It's like, yeah. uh, oh, you're saying you can't work anymore? Well, then, here, drink uh, drink this poison. I don't know. Yeah, but, you're also, you know, when there was a war, you were supposed to fight to death. And, like, if you... Anyway, like you were supposed to stay with your shield. That was the Germanic tribes. If you abandoned your shield, that was like punishable by death. So you were like supposed to fight till uh, till you die. The Romans so, would also punish by death uh, soldiers who abandoned their post. I yeah. believe uh, I could be wrong about this, but I believe but, they but used what, to actually burn you to death if you abandoned. Oh wow! So, but what mm -hmm. people group did uh, did he belong to? Uh, Frozen Fritz. Well, well, what people group was he? Frozen Fritz. You can call him Otzi. That's the most commonly used name. It appears Otzi, O T Z I. So okay. that's the, that's the great mystery. What people group did this guy belong to? And I think that's probably what Love and Me wanted to uh, wanted me to find out. So, uh, Vinskal Valley is the today it correspond it's the western part of the italian province of south tyrol which is a border province with austria and in austria there's a there's a place called tyrol and south tyrol is the part of it that's in italy so vinskal mm -hmm. valley is actually named after celtic tribes um there was a group called the venostis tribe that lived there and the maps i've looked at you know, most of the maps of Italy before Roman times, they show that northern Italy was mostly ruled by the Celts. However, this guy is not a Celt, judging by his DNA analysis. Um, so Celtic what was he? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't know. That's uh... <laughs> Well, there's, there's some possibilities. So Celtic people... The Y chromosome is, uh, what was it, R1B, R1B. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same for most of Western Europe, is R1B. And uh, this guy doesn't belong to that. Um, so uh, according to uh, Pliny the Elder, because the Romans, they came and they took over this area. It was in, uh, I think, 15 BC. They came and they took it over. And there were some other tribes there that were not Celtic. And I had to kind of dig around to find this. And I guess a lot of people that make these, these maps, they got lazy or they didn't bother to do the research or they didn't understand. But, they, but there were some other groups there as well. So according to Pliny the Elder, the Alpine nations so subdued were 
Triumph Triumpolini, the Camuni, the Venostis, the Venonons, Venonensis, the Isarchi, the Briuni, the Genuanis, the uh, Foconatis, four nations of the Vindelici. However, there were other groups there um, that were called uh, the Reiti. Uh, there were a different set of tribes that were not Celtic. So, like I mentioned, uh, the Celtic Y chromosome is R1B. Otzi's Y chromosome is G2A. G2A to B. I never heard of the G haplogroup before I started to research this. Mm -hmm. But apparently it is a real thing. And the bulk of them are actually in the country of Georgia today, where I think it's somewhere around 50% of the population has a G-type chromosome, though it's not exactly the same as uh, OTCs. And in Europe, you find a G haplogroup is the most highly concentrated today in Corsica. Um, his mitochondrial DNA belongs to subclade K1. But, the, but it's of a different variety from all the known K1 types today. So it's, it's, it doesn't correspond to any known currently existing group, but it, it is fit with uh, K1. And according to this map I found on uh, Upedia, which I'll include in the slideshow, uh, K1 still makes up about 10% or higher of uh, the population in that area of South Tyrol today. So it, it's still relatively high, uh, the, the mitochondrial DNA, and more so there, it's more concentrated there than it is in Corsica. And I, I do have an explanation for this, a theoretical explanation, which I think is logical. Um, now, his, his, just to be clear, if anybody's wondering what the significance of this is, so your Y chromosome you only have if you're a man, and it doesn't mix with anything else. So your Y chromosome changes very, very slowly over thousands of years. And it's what's used to track lineage. Um, you know, and the mitochondrial DNA, you only get, so your Y chromosome, you only get from your father. Your mitochondrial DNA, you only get from your mother. The mitochondria is, um, it's not an actual, it's a, symbiote actually a single celled life form that lives inside your cells and you only get them from your mother so that's another type of dna you can use to track the maternal lineage um over thousands of years because it doesn't get mixed up you just straight get it from your mother and then autosomal dna is the dna that you get from both father and mother so his autosomal dna is most similar to what is found in sardinia Okay, so that's uh, that's the island below Corsica. Uh, mm. His his blood type was type O, and uh, he's lactose intolerant, which is unusual for Europeans. But it's quite it appears most likely that this guy is actually not an Indo-European. And uh, today they found 19 men in uh, the Austrian part, the Austrian Tyrol who are descendants of this Iceman. And how do they know? A uh, very unique mutation in the autosomal DNA that was found in his body was also found in these guys. And my guess is that Loving Me, um, she probably, uh, in her DNA test, it probably showed up some of these very unique autosomal mutations which come from the Iceman. That'd be my guess. And that's probably how they tracked that. So even though this guy had all these diseases and he got in a serious fight and he got killed up in the mountain, it looks like he managed to have quite a few kids beforehand. Maybe that's why he got killed. Maybe he was getting with other people's wives and they just decided to deal with them one day. I, I don't know. Little joke there, but maybe it's true. Um, so now you, you asked some questions like what people group does they correspond to? So there's this group called the, the Reiti. There's a, a group of tribes that lived in that area. And 
the there is actually an Iceman movie that was made. I think in 2017 they made a movie about this guy, and they used uh, the Radic language as the spoken language for the movie, because as far as the oldest records go, historical records, the people that lived in that area recorded by history, they spoke this this language called Radic, which is not an Indo-European language. And um, the Romans, they conquered these people, the Rati, along with the Celts, and they renamed the province Ratia et Vindelicia. And the Rati were conquered in 15 BC. And after being annexed, they became uh, apparently loyal subjects to the Romans, and they sent a lot of men to serve as auxiliaries, uh, like disproportionately, like they were overly represented. So a small population sending a lot of men. Uh, I think it was something like five legions, but I'm not completely sure that. And that could be why. So um, that could be why the G chromosome is lower there than it is in Sardinia, because if a lot of their men joined the Roman auxiliaries, well, first of all, Roman auxiliaries were for men who were not citizens of the Roman Empire. And it was a pathway to citizenship. And you were still going to pay taxes to the Romans regardless of whether or not you were a citizen, but you wouldn't have the same level of legal protections. So if you're a Roman citizen, they cannot crucify you ever. So like Paul, the Apostle Paul, that's why... um, I forget what chapter it is, but he tells the guy he's a Roman citizen. They all freaked out because yeah, you, yeah. You, mm-hmm. So, so that's what it, that's a reason to join as an auxiliary. And if you join as an auxiliary, uh, the Romans are not going to post you near your home province. You're going to get sent out into the boonies around some other group of people, and you might be responsible for keeping them in line or for keeping uh, barbaric invaders out. And you may also become a sedentary farmer there when your service is done. So if the men are leaving and either settling somewhere else or getting killed, then that Y chromosome is going to be depleted, but the mitochondrial DNA is still going to be there. Because even if some other kind of guy comes and marries those women, that mitochondrial DNA is just going to come from those women. Uh, and the Romans, they thought originally that the Reti were uh, Etruscans because their language was similar to Etruscan. I think it might have been mutually intelligible with Etruscan. And they, they figured that uh, when the Celts came down and invaded down and they kind of went down uh, through the Etruscan territory, they thought that these people were Etruscans that fled up into the mountains and then their language diverged because of the barbarous lifestyle in the mountains. It, they thought the language had degenerated. And the Reiti, they used an Etruscan text when they wrote. And it looks like uh, these guys are not Indo-Europeans. Now, some people, like the different sites that I looked at, they're saying that, well, maybe the uh, the Radic people, it may be that they are not the same people that Utsi came from, like maybe they stepped down on them. And and it could be that the uh, the Radic people were a product of Etruscans conquering and um, assimilating some other group that was there. My thinking is probably they weren't chased up into the mountains by the Celts, but probably the Etruscans were a contiguous group that when the Celts came down, they split them in two. And after that, the Radic people, they diverged more in their language. That's my theory. Uh, and it could be that some of them also fled up into the mountains. But if if Otsi is one of the Radic people, then they would have been there, you know, before the Celts came and invaded. And I think that's the best, the most likely possibility is that he was one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, because certainly he's not a Celt. So it's either he's one of those or his people were conquered and absorbed by the Radic people. Um, But then uh, 
Okay, so the so I'll talk briefly about these other groups and then I'll stop. So the natives of Corsica, before the Romans came, were called Corsi. I would assume the island is named after them. And there are a number of different Corsi tribes ruling different parts of the island. And these guys actually were Indo-Europeans. They were an Indo-European culture. And they built, uh, you know, uh, monolithic structures like uh, dolmens and menhirs, those big rocks that are turned upright. Um, and then the other candidate, the Sardinians, which uh, Otzi's, uh, his autosomal DNA is the most similar to. Um, the Sardinians were not Indo-Europeans and they spoke a different language. And the Sardinians, they're actually the people that gave rise to the neurogic culture. And the neurogic culture, they built these big towers, which were called neurages. And I'll put some pictures of it in the slideshow. And one thing these people are famous for is they formed part of the sea peoples who spread out from the islands and helped to cause the Bronze Age collapse. And some of these neurogic people, they also settled in Egypt. Like first they attacked it as, bar as barbarians and pirates from the sea. But the uh, Egyptian government, they, they convinced some of them to just join the Egyptian army, I guess as special units. And you can see some images of them because they got these helmets with these protuberances that look kind of like horns and then there'll be like a round circle on top as well. And I'll put pictures of this in the slideshow, but you can see some of this in some of the Egyptian art depictions of these people as well. Uh, they, they didn't dress like Egyptians. That's how you tell them apart is their costume. And if you saw the Ten Commandments movie, you may have seen some guys with weird helmets that, that, and that, that's a depiction of the uh, Ten Commandments movie with Charlton Heston. That's a depiction of the neurogic people. So that's, that's and my thinking is, and also um, some of the articles I read, there was a, a wider group of people in Europe during the ancient times. And, you know, the Iberians, who probably the descendant, the ancestors of the Basque, and some other groups like the neurogic culture and the Etruscans, they're not Indo-Europeans. They're a different people group. They looked similar to Europeans, kind of like the Guanches, but not the same. Different language and different culture and different DNA, but they basically got stomped down on and absorbed. And it was mainly the Romans that, that did this. Um, of course, but they, they did keep a record of what they were doing as they were doing it. So we know usually the original names of these people and bits of their language sometimes. And that's, that's about it. That's everything that I had. I hope that uh, Love and Me will see this, and I hope that it's helpful. So you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's an it's interesting story. I think it's uh, interesting to see that they're in Georgia, the country Georgia, and then in Sardinia and Corsica, which they're so far apart. Well, the um, spread of the of this G chromosome is contiguous between these regions, but it's very, very thin. Like it's less than ten percent of the population in most places. Okay. So even you know even we could have a G chromosome potentially, but extremely not likely. Interesting. Extremely. So they, hmm? Yeah. No, interesting that. Uh, it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. So I, guess I, it, I guess it just kind of when they got absorbed in uh, in history, right? Or for in the other people out there. So. Yeah. If there were, you know, if they were the Radic people, which I think is probably the case, then they would have gotten absorbed by the Romans and they stopped using the, their language fell out of use around the third century AD, fell completely out of use. And if you have their men going and settling elsewhere or getting killed, and then uh, Romans coming and settling and mingling with the women, then that would, because uh, like today, the 
it's the uh, the R1A chromosome that prevails there now uh, for for the bulk of the population. And uh, most people in that region, they either speak Italian or German. And yeah, the the autosomal DNA, it probably was more similar to what you would find in Sardinia in the past. But I would assume because of Romans and Celts and Germans mixing into the area, most of the original DNA got reduced. They're kind of just a ghost population today very little of it left and you see somebody like Otzi um, is a, more of like a an example of the original population a control specimen you might say before all these conquests came in maybe he died in uh, conquests like maybe he died fighting with the Celts yeah uh, it's interesting uh, so so many uh, different cultures uh, intermingling. We see you look, talk about Sardinia and um, Corsica. Sardinia has also been occupied by the Phoenicians. Um, yeah. And they, they had also had, and they had people come over there during the Mesolithic age. Um, but yeah, interesting. Uh, and I'm just reading up on, <laughs> as you're talking, um, I went to Switzerland a couple of years ago on vacation and they have four official languages there because I was just uh, triggered by you said, well, their language was absorbed, but they had four uh, languages, um, namely French in the West part and German in the North part. They have Italian in the South part. And then there's a small uh, language left is called the Romanche on the East part bordering um, or bordering Austria which is also bordering South Tyrol, right? Um, and I just see here, I found that Romanche was actually a descendant of the Roman language, and it was eventually replaced the uh, Celtic or Celtic and Raetic languages. Yeah, I heard that the Romance language might actually have some influence from Raetic, maybe some loan words. But I'm not, I, I didn't really look into that enough to, to know. It's kind of, it's kind of like the trail, the trail gets kind of cold um, to track all this stuff down. And I, and, you know, one thing about Italy is all those, most of those different people groups spoke different languages. The Romans that spoke Latin, they were just, a, they started off as just a small patch. But then, you know, they forced everybody to assimilate to their culture. And then they turned around and they did the same thing to, like, Spain and France and most of Europe, actually. Most of Western Europe, at least. And, and for a while, North Africa, um, of course, later on, that influence got erased by the Muslim invasion. But, yeah, it's just, you, you don't think about it, but back then... All you would have had a patchwork of all sorts of different languages, some that aren't even related. Like if these people didn't even speak an Indo-European language, there would be nothing in common at all. Like not even uh, no cognates, no. Um, uh, actually, I think they may have shared uh, letters in the alphabet. But you actually, India is kind of like that today. Like different states will have multiple languages inside of one state. You might just go to another city and they don't speak your language. Yeah. So, yeah. I know, I, I learned something new. I didn't even know about the, the Raetic language, R-A-E, R-H-A-E-T-I-C. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I was in this area where now they speak Romanche. Apparently they still have some Raetic uh, words in there. Um, and I'm reading up about it, and and apparently yes, they were also they also spoke Raetic in Corsica at one point in time. Um, but yeah, interesting story. So learn something new. Wasn't it also like the they found this this guy in '92? Didn't they also base like some cheesy Hollywood movie on this, where some guy is like frozen from the ice? And then yeah, they... it's probably that's probably the movie it made in twenty in uh, 2017. Where they, they and I from the reviews they said it was very graphic and no no I think there's like an older one like late nineties it's very cheesy and then he has to go to high school something like that <laughs> yeah. 
yeah anyway Sounds like a okay well deal. yeah interesting uh, interesting story so thanks for that and um thanks for loving me for uh sharing the um the topic and bringing it up i appreciate it she also wanted us to look at antarctica she said that she had some ancestry from from there somehow like some bodies that they found there supposedly washed up from some ship so maybe that's something else you know that uh well, one thing i've heard about antarctica is that they found actually tropical plants frozen beneath the ice in some places so it might be another thing to do although i that like uh, is so if maybe if we get uh, so the point is leave us a comment and at this stage when we don't have a lot of request a lot of uh, watchers yet and uh, we will very likely pick up your request if you leave one for us yeah definitely and ivor i think we should do a dna test sometime and uh that might be an interesting episode yeah although that would risk of revealing our <laughs> Our true identity. Uh, one thing I've <laughs> well, heard, I don't know. If um, it's I or think not. I'm 100 percent Dutch, but you never know. So. Well, but there's probably yes, but there's probably ghost pop ghost elements, you know, in there from other groups. Because originally, originally, the Celtic, uh, the Celtic population had a vast territory. They stretched all the way from Ireland into what is today Russia, and they were in Anatolia. And, and northern Italy, and the country that's today Germany, that area was originally all Celtic, or mostly Celtic. So the, the Germans, they came down, they, they were originally concentrated in the area of Denmark and Scandinavia, and they, they gradually forced their way down over time, and the Romans forced their way up, and that's how the Celtic people got eaten up between those two groups, you know? Yeah. And and Ireland was the only Celtic country that remained free. Of course, today it's part of the EU, so it's not really a free country anymore. But um, that was that that was like the last Celtic country that was not uh, ruled by some. Well, although the, although the English ruled it later, right? Yeah, they took them over for a while, but like Wales same as Wales, by the way, which is not England. Because it has its own rich culture. <laughs> <laughs> it does, by the way, because they're also Celtic or Celtic. We say Celtic here in Dutch uh, in the Netherlands. So I don't know. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know which is correct. I've heard that both are correct, but I don't see how they can both be correct. But yeah, they got squeezed between. And I think Caesar uh, writes about this. You can actually read about it in great detail. Now, one thing he... I've heard, if anybody's. I'll say this one last thing. And one thing I heard is that uh, Julius Caesar, when he was killing the Gauls, he noticed that um, all of them had the same kind of feet, or most of them did, where the big toe was just as long as the toe next to it. They both terminated at the same point. And uh, I can't remember where I read this, so it may not be true. But interestingly enough, my toes are like that. And of course, I'm like half Irish genetically because my mother's family is entirely Irish immigrants. So that so maybe that's maybe that's a real thing. I don't know. I think you need more than one uh, sample size to make that determination. But it should be mentioned somewhere. Somewhere I read that. So if somebody knows where that is and if that's correct, do leave a comment. Hey, do you know, Ivor, by any chance, how many uh, people in France nowadays are still of Celtic um, heritage? I think most, most of them. I think the gross majority of them genetically are, uh, are, are descended from the Celts. And in the south, they're probably more descended from the Romans. But the Romans Latinized all those people. So they all were speaking Latin at the time of the fall. The Franks were a ruling class minority. They didn't become the the genetic majority. They were a ruling mm. class, a small ruling class, which is why uh, the Latin language continued because the French is derived from Latin. It's not a Germanic language. But uh, in England, 
the population replacement was much more of a thing because uh, the original Celtic language and Latin both went away and the Germanic language prevailed. Yeah, although, you know, we talk about they're Germans in England, but they're, they came from Denmark, right? Yeah, well, all the original Germanic people started in Denmark and Scandinavia, and they spread south and east and west. And they really, pushed but up. then who were the original people in the, the Netherlands, for example? I think, good question. It's either going to be, that's something that we should probably try to find out, right? Probably yeah. it was Celtic people, and they probably got pushed down by uh, Germanic tribes. Yeah, I wonder if it, that's why. What, what if I had any other DNA, it would probably be Celtic or maybe Frisian. Those are the probably two most. And there's a tiny chance there might be some uh, Viking or Scandinavian because they also raided the shores over here. So I don't know how different DNA would be between Netherlands and Norway. Anyways, I think it's probably very similar. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've been to Sweden many times, um, also Norway a couple times, but I, Sweden more recently, and I noticed I can't tell the difference between the way they look. Um, they're actually better looking <laughs> on average than Dutch people. <laughs> Not that Dutch people are uh, particularly ugly, but um, yeah, no, you can't tell a difference, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we should. we should probably know that. <laughs> we probably should, yeah. The British Isles, all of them were originally Celtic populations. And Spain and France, you know, that's pretty much the same kind of people, uh, a mixture of Celts and Romans. I believe the only thing that's left of the original Iberian population, also known as Iberos, would be the Basque people. And the Basque people are not part of the Indo-European group. They're totally uh, different, totally, totally different group. I mean, they look like us, of course, but they have different origins. They might be similar now genetically, kind of like how the, you know, the Finns are similar. Gen well, I don't know if they are genetic. I know the Hungarians are similar genetically, but they had a different origin linguistically. So, hmm. yeah, probably. Yeah, it's Celtic and... And uh, mainly the Celtic culture that was destroyed more so than the than the gene pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, man. So, ah, good story. Yeah, yeah I think we, I think we should do uh, we should do one of those DNA tests sometime, and uh, I think that would make a good episode. But uh, yeah. it might it'd be a little uh, I don't know what uh, what would you call it self indulgent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe we should do a random person on the street. No, I don't know. Maybe, like if, maybe <laughs> you find out you're descended from uh, some ancient mass murderer or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe if we have listeners that, uh, if they're still listening at this point in time because we're rambling on again, uh, if you've done a DNA test um, and you have some. Yeah, some different people grouping there. Um, let us know, and because the, there's a good chance for us to find out more. Yours would probably them. be I two according to this Y chromosome map. Yours is probably your Y chromosome is probably going to be I two B, and mine is probably going to be R one A, because it looks like I two B is around the Netherlands and Denmark and and what's that other country? Belgium. Yeah. And. It, and R1A is the is the chromosome that corresponds to Slavs and Iranians and Indians, at least northern Indians. So, okay. So okay. most likely I'd be R1A, unless my ancestor was actually a Mongol that took advantage, to put it politely, of one of the local women. If that's the case, then um, I would have a, a non, I'd have like a C, I think C3. Uh, or something like that, different Y chromosome. All the other DNA would be gone, but that Y chromosome lasts for hundreds of years, thousands of years, without really significantly changing. So, C three, yeah. yeah. But that, but yeah. So that that would be like a deep dive genetic test. That's what like a genetic test would detect that. You know, 
that you're a descendant of, of the Huns. <laughs> Maybe. Well, there must be some kind of uh, remnant of them. Well, well, maybe we can, we should try. We Where did the Huns go? That should be a topic because yeah. um, I'm really curious about that. Yeah. Because you know, I haven't seen any, uh, a lot of Asian people. I mean, you know, there's they actually, are there nowadays, but not like, like you know, like, uh, in, but I haven't been to Eastern Europe that much, to be honest. So. Yeah, there's actually Tatars in uh, Eastern Europe. Yeah, in some of the countries there, like they're more like country. Turk. They're Turkic people, right? Aren't they? Or... Well, Turkics, Turks came with the Mongols. Okay. They kind of they kind of ran together. They're all those uh, steppe barbarians that it's like a snowball effect. When the Mongols came, they picked up all these other people with them. Yeah, I've been to the Czech Republic before, and you see some really interesting-looking people there with, like, really dark hair and very blue eyes. And, um, yeah, anyway, different topic. I don't know. Yeah, I think we better conclude. We already went way too much. Yeah, um, but, yeah, if you if you uh, enjoy this kind of uh, discussion, and, and, yeah, like I said, maybe you have uh, some people group you would like us to discover more about. Maybe you know more about the Huns. Um, please let us know. Please give us a like. Um, please share sure. it. And uh, we appreciate you. Thanks for, for being our listener. And yeah, thanks for, uh, for your support. Appreciate it.